Hi, so today I'm going to go over another board repair. I'm a little tired. It is the end of the day, and I got here at 8, and it's 8, 19, and I'm, I'm just tired and exhausted. Uh, sometimes you run into a problem that you can't kind of solve, and it can sometimes mentally exhaust you, just driving yourself nuts trying to figure it out. And I just started to realize that being mentally exhausted can be just as annoying as being physically exhausted. But the only thing more annoying than that is being exhausted with both. Uh, let me show you. So the, the, these two boards were sent in by a good friend of mine who has a computer repair shop in North Carolina. And it, it's an amazing place, it's good people, and he's a good guy. Um, so let me show you the one that drove me nuts. So this piece of fucking shit here, oh God bless my friend, the fuck this motherboard. Uh, everything would measure the way it was supposed to, but then I would turn it around. And when I turned it around, everything went nuts. And I tapped the components, and I looked at the components, and I visually inspected, and this shit actually looked good. It wasn't like burnt at the ends. It wasn't. They weren't red or fucked up looking. So I just, I, I just kept knocking my brain, looking at this, going, why isn't everything adding up the way it's supposed to? Well, what was happening was every time I was turning the motherboard upside down, the gravity, just the gravity from planet Earth, was keeping the fucking shit from, um, from attaching to the board, and the solder pads were actually coming off of the board a tiny bit when you turn the thing upside down. Can you believe this bullshit? That seriously has not happened to me in, in years. And you can see that there's a little bit of rework here. This one's not done yet. We still got some ways to go, but yeah, this is some fucking horse shit right here. Yeah, look at that. See if I can get a top view. Yeah, as you, you can see there's uh, some solder pads missing, so I got this little, uh, this, this little clusterfuck going on right here. And this little clusterfuck going on right there. This is what it's supposed to look like. Let's go over here. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to look like. This is my sodomized workaround, work in progress version. So yeah, that shit was actually falling off of the board, and I had, I had, I had no fucking idea. And so just about the end of the day. And, and again, no, what normal people do is they say, this is causing me problems. I'm going to put it aside and come back to it later. What crazy people with severe, insane forms of OCD do is just keep racking their brain into the ground for two or three hours, wondering why something's not working the way it's supposed to. All right, anyway, on to the one where there was actually uh, some success. This one, we have partial success. I'm going to continue on this tomorrow. This one, we have full success. Both were liquid damaged. I threw this in the, this had no backlight. I threw it in the ultrasonic cleaner, still no backlight. The fuse is fine. The LP8543SQ is fine. Boost fed is fine, boost diode is fine. Uh, so uh, the thing that you should check first, that I checked last on this because I'm tired and I'm being a dumbass at the end of my day, is the enable pin. Now, the way this thing works, that when this little chip gets voltage on pin four, the LP8543SQ, it tells it to turn on. So here, I'm just gonna put this down so you can see, since it has a backlight, I'm gonna zoom in on my multimeter and show you that lovely, lovely turn on voltage. See that three volts right there? Beautiful. Now, this is a 12 volt circuit. So most of that is running off on 12 volts. Now, how do you get that three volts? Well, the way that works is with something called a voltage divider. The way a voltage divider works is you use certain values of resistors to get the voltage you want. So you put one resistor between, let's say, you put one resistor between the voltage you want to lower and its destination point. So we put a 301 kilo ohm resistor in between the 12 volt LCD backlight power and the backlight enable. Then you put a resistor to ground that is lower in resistance to that resistor. Uh, so you're going to put a resistor to ground that's 100, 100 kilo ohms. The point is, uh, you put one resistor going between the 12 volts and the backlight enable pin, and then you put another going between the, re the resistor you just put and the backlight enable pin and ground, and what that does is it lowers it to 3 volts. It's not the most efficient way to do it, it's not the sexiest way to do it, but this is not powering 5 or 10 or 20 different things. This is not a signal that's running around the board, it's going to one space, and this is a quick, dirty, and cheap way to do it. And it's, it's pretty efficient for, for, the, for this purpose. So the whole idea here is right in this section. Come on, motherfucker. Come on, zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah, so right over here, 
Between these two resistors, you're turning 12 volts into 3 volts before it goes here, and once it goes here, it says, hey, motherfucker, turn on the backlight. Now, here, when I checked, I got 12 volts on the 300 one kilo ohm resistor, but on the other end, I got zero volts. Huh. So, I take that resistor off the board, I measure it, and I'm getting infinity ohms. So I put a, another 301 kilo ohm resistor there, and it works. Actually, I didn't do that because I couldn't find one, so I, I used the three volt power supply I had lying around in a wire, and as soon as I put the wire there, the shit fucking turned on. Anyway, so I, I finally found the 301 kilo ohm resistor, and I put it there, and now, look, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. If you're doing data recovery, by the way, that's the worst thing in the world, but for motherboard repair, that's, that's a really cool thing to see. And it works. And, you know, again, a lot of the times it's not the fuse, a lot of the times it's not the boost fed, it's not the backlight chip. I see all these people going, you know, where is the fuse? Where is the fed? I'm, I want to replace my LVDS connector. And it's like, how do you replace it? And it's like, do you really want to replace this fucking thing? Look at it, it's miserable. And, you know, this one is, I understand why some people want to do it, because they'll see corrosion on the pins. Like, see, this one has some corrosion on the pins over there. See those pins, the ones used for backlight? That's the kind of fuck. See that? Come on, focus. Yeah, they are, but I don't want to fucking replace that. It's miserable. And also, again, I'm not trying to do shoddy work, but why replace something when that's not the cause of your problem? If it works, but doesn't look perfect, which is very often the case with liquid damage, just fucking leave well enough alone. Don't fuck with it. Don't, don't fuck with it. And again, that's something that I do very often that I shouldn't, that my staff yells at me for, and that I gotta learn to do better on. I continue to fuck with shit, even once it actually works, just to make it look a little nicer, look a little prettier, be perfect. And you know what? This is fine. Unless you like this board on fire, in which case you will have much more problems, those pins are just fine. They're a little red, but no, don't, don't replace your LVDS connector because the internet tells you to. Don't replace a bunch of shit you don't have to replace because it looks like the problem. Again, if you looked at this board instantly, the first thing that you would have said it was that the fuse is bad because before I, I uh, moved, put a, a re-solder the fuse onto the board, it looked like shit. There was like black on each side. And if you, again, the, the fuse was fine. I just did that uh, you know, just because it, it looked messed up, but it was fine. You, people go about replacing all this shit just because they think that's the problem, because that looks like the problem, because that is in the way, and it's physically damaged, but very often the problem is something that is hiding that's going to drive you nuts. So, don't, uh, so just follow some logic, follow along uh, everything that's here. Hey, this is where the, t the backlight outputs. Hey, this is where it tells it to turn on. Just follow along the steps, measure, and don't jump to conclusions, because if you jump to conclusions, you wind up fucking yourself. Uh, so yeah, this is an 820-2530 board, liquid damage, no backlight, has backlight, I'm happy. And this is a board with power issues that has slightly less power issues than when it came here, but is still being a piece of shit. And again, yeah, I'm, I'm just enjoying my work to the viewfinder of the camera on the zoom. I'm going to make that look better later and not use a piece of wire that I threw solder on it, but oh, that looks atrocious. Oh, shit. Yeah, until next time, uh, talk to you later.